It's similar to the clothes basket weave. It uses less tape, so it's sometimes more favorable. This is for the athlete that wants inversion and eversion control, so they've sprained their ankle, but they still want to be able to plantar and dorsiflex their foot. So we start the same way. I need about a half an inch towards me. There, that's I, I'm going to go and put my two base strips on, like I did before, overlapping by half. But I'm not going to put a four-foot anchor because I don't have any horseshoes in this particular one. So once I do that, I'm still going to ask her to keep her foot at 90 degrees, just like we did on the, the inversion eversion one. And I'm going to measure pre-rip uh, pre my three stirrups. Now the first stirrup is going to go straight up the middle. So I still have three that I've, that I've imagined I've pre-ripped. The first one, again, make sure you guys are staying straight on the heel. I notice a lot of people are getting into the arches a little bit and doing this. And that's really hard to do it straight and it's hard to manipulate it. So I'm coming straight up the malleoli and I'm manipulating it again. So see how much play I have here? I do the same thing. If it's an inversion sprain, I'm pulling up harder on the lateral side. If it's an eversion sprain, I'm pulling it up evenly so I don't preload inversion, which is a much easier way to do it. Okay, the other thing, so, so I have three of these. I have to, oh, sorry, I didn't pre-measure them. Do like I say, not like I do, right? Here we go. <laughs> So the third one is going to overlap the previous one, but it's going to be fanned at the top. So this is different, right? Remember the other strips were perpendicular or were, um, sorry, were parallel. These ones are going to be parallel but not staggered and fanned at the top. So it goes under the um, heel and then I sl make it uh, fan slightly forward. So I'm still moving in the slightly forward position, but I'm fanning it. See the advantage of pre-ripping, then they all come out the same. Okay, and this one is going to be fanned slightly backwards now. So I have them all even under here, but they fan at the top. So that allows for a nice uh, split. Now again, going medial to lateral, I'm going to close it down. So I tack down all those edge pieces at the top. How's the ripping going for you guys? Much better? No. Still <laughs> struggling? Okay, so that will come. Overlap by half, and I'm going to still change my angle as I go down. And again, probably don't need, need heel and lace pads, but it's not a bad idea. Um, if I were to include heel and lace pads, I would come over to the side more, so I'm not starting and stopping on the heel and lace pads. So I'm still coming down and I'm still changing my angle, but I'm doing it more over to the side. Is it the heel and lace pads, are they mandatory in the basket one? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, definitely. And again, like before, we want to come to the base of the malleola. Some people were stopping a bit short, but we want to come right down. And if you're changing your angle, you're not going to cut into the Achilles tendon. So if you come too low, it cuts into the Achilles. And if it's not low enough, then uh, you still have open space. Okay, now there's the, clo the sort of the, the complete uh, skeleton. Now I go straight into my figure eight and my heel locks configuration, which you guys know pretty well now. So I'm going to go straight into my figure eight. Keep it tight. So keep it, like, keep the tension when you're going through it. There's my eight. I come straight up my uh, lateral locks, cross the top of the foot, and up my medial side. And end on that medial lock, just like before. How come after the stirrups you didn't put that lock in? Uh, the, the horseshoe? Yeah. So two reasons. One, I have no four-foot anchor to put it onto. And two, because I want to have plantar and dorsiflexion. I still want to have that subtalar joint locked in, but I want to be able to dorsi and plantar flex. <laughs> All right? So that's the key. And if that's not enough, you see, see how much less tape there is in the forefoot? People like that quite a bit. Uh, she may require one more. So I'm going to keep it smooth. And also remember, if you're going to keep your tension even, if you put this on tighter than you did the rest of it, then that's where you get the pookiness. You want it to be even throughout, right? You want it to have no tension and you want it to be even. It, oh, and the other thing I want to show you is, if it's a lady's foot that you're taping that's a smaller anatomical foot, so you want to keep your angle a little bit sharper. If it's a big male foot, you want to have a nice generous sort of 45 degree angle. And if it's like, like uh, Jordan, for example, where are you, Jordan? What size are your feet? 
Uh, yeah, so like a 13 to 16, right? Some athletes have really, really big feet and they're really easy to learn on. You need to make your angle really generous so that you have lots of room to come around, but it just wouldn't work with a lady's foot. So the key is you are starting on the lateral malleolus, but it doesn't hurt. You're really just coming through that medial line. Just let that piece fall down. It's going to hit that malleolus on the high side, right? So if you're having trouble with your start, and just make sure you keep your tension in it, and that when you come through here, it should be really straightforward. I just want to show you this one more time so everybody's getting it. See, you should be able to get that crease free through there if you've got the right tension on it. And again, just let the tape goes where it, go where it wants to because if you force it, you'll never get the angles. Come straight up, cross the top of the foot, uh, over, the, uh, over the top of the malleolus, up the medial side, and make sure you end on the medial lock. Just like that, okay? You have to end, that side. end right there on the medial lock. And the reason for that is there's various things. Like because I mismeasured these, I didn't measure three in advance. They're different. That's an area of weakness in the tape job, right? It shouldn't be able to do that. So we cover those pieces up. Then it's a much better tape job. And also, I need to have an absolute end here to be able to find it where it starts. And also, you need to tack this onto something. If you stop short, if you stopped over here, that's not a complete heel lock then. Right? It's not a supportive heel lock. By coming around and tacking down, you've completed that medial side. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Okay, and then 